Why is it saying? Okay, are we live? It's supposed to be. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everyone. Um, just trying to. Yes. Yeah, we're live. Wonderful. Okay. All right, Sister Crystal, would you like to pray? And then we're going to do the other stuff that we do. Heavenly Father, we thank you uh, for this live tonight. We thank you, Father, for how that you have kept us and how that you've watched over us. Father, we give thanks today for the great and wonderful things that you've done. We thank you, Father, for your protection, for your provision, Lord. We thank you, Father, for... Uh, your mighty works, your many acts, and your many benefits. Father, we just praise your name today. And Father, we look unto you because you are the author and the finisher of our faith, the strength of our lives. And Father, we come before you in the mighty name of Jesus, Father. And we pray that you would just move by your spirit on this live tonight as we begin to worship you, Father, in the topic of prayer. We pray, Father, that somebody will be blessed, Father, that someone would have something to take away that they can glean and learn from and grow by, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, as we pray, Father, we lift up those, Father, that would like to attend but can't be here tonight. We pray, Father, that you would move by your spirit in the lives of your people everywhere, that you would strengthen your people with might on the end and by your spirit, Father, that you would touch your people everywhere from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet, that you would send a fresh anointing upon us, Father, let the anointing of God break every chain. Let it destroy every yoke. Let it heal every sick body, Father. And we pray tonight, Father, that it would even speak a word of life unto your people, a word of deliverance, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, for Father, we can't do anything without you. We need you, Father, in every step that we take, every decision we make, and in everything that we do. So we, your people tonight, are calling upon you, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, that you would not only have your way on this live tonight, but that you would have your way in the lives of your people everywhere, that you would strengthen, that you would comfort, that you would heal. And we thank you, Father, for what you've done, what you're doing, and what you're going to do in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, we, O oh God, glorify your name today, for we ask these in all blessings in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we pray that no weapon formed against the righteous shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise up against us in judgment, thou shalt condemn. For this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and their righteousness of me, saith the Lord. And Father, we believe, O God, according to your word, Father, that your thoughts towards are meant good and not for evil to give us an expected end. So Father, we depend on you tonight, Father. We don't trust in horses or chariots, but we call upon the name of the Lord. For your name is a strong tower. The righteous run into and there are safe. So blessed be the name of the Lord. And we praise your name on tonight, Father. And we give you all the glory, all the honor for we ask these and all blessings with thanksgiving in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Um, happy Martin Luther King Day, everyone. Mm. Happy Monday. Um we are so blessed to have you on this programming on today. Um, you know, I was between like canceling it or not. Um, but, um, you know, here we are. So um, we pray that your your day and your week ahead be blessed. Amen. Um, I'm Evangelist Astrid Brown, and I'm the... Um, the host for tonight. And um, I want to also introduce my beautiful, lovely <laughs> power pack uh, sister uh, from another mister. <laughs> and none, none other than evangelist um, Chris Lynn Robinson. Praise the Lord. Um, in the absence of our sister Julia uh, Merced Feliciano, 
Um, she was not, um, she was a little bit under the weather. So we're going to keep her in prayer that God would heal and deliver her from whatever it is that the enemy is trying to put on her body. We also um, want to be in our in absence of Tony Miller, that she's taken a sabbatical for one or two months, um, a few months. So we just want to know that we love her. And um, here on What the True, we give all the panelists um, time for themselves, you know, um, to sort out life, um, it's shenanigans. Um, you know, we are not bound by, you know, we have to be here. These ladies are committed. I know that they, they love God and they love God's people. So, um, you know, we have to give room for, for human, um, things to happen in our life. Um, you know, we, we are not only, um, you know, spirit, but we also human. So with that, um, I just want to say that, um, you know, just sit back and um, enjoy. If you want, you can go into the comments. Don't forget to share on your page. Um, if you're watching it on YouTube on Wednesday, because we have a YouTube channel and it usually goes up live on Wednesdays um, at 9.30 a.m. You can also comment there. You can watch the replay and um, you can also share it from, from YouTube. Um, so uh, we pray that you would um, enjoy this segment. Or today we are speaking about the power of prayer. And as you can see in our background, it we started off with our 150th episode. And today is the 151. So we are just... Um, going to ask you to, um, you know, just sit tight as um, evangelist. Um, Chris Lynn is going to start us off on the title. Today, we are going to be speaking on how to develop a life of prayer. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And I just wanted to say that my my brother, Minister Orville, was supposed to come um, come on tonight and chime in with us, but he had a little mishap with his phone, and apparently he needs the phone to be able to log into the computer, and um, it shattered in pieces um, this morning. So he was um, up and about trying to get it fixed, but apparently it wasn't able to be fixed, so... Um, we, he's also going to be excused for today. I know that he is another devoted man of God that he would, um, he would have been here if, um, you know, if he would have been able to. So, um, with no further, um, messages, <laughs> we are going to hand it over to evangelist Chris Lynn Robinson. Amen. Praise the Lord. I mean, it's still early. Brother Orville might be able to join us, but um, for now, we'll just, you know, move along with the topic tonight. And it is how to develop a prayer life. So um, the one thing that I would like to start out with is that prayer starts off in the infancy stage, just like anything else. It, it starts off with um, one step at a time, one brick at a time. Um, you know, you 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 kind of just build on top of what you you know you started with your foundation. So, uh, building a prayer life. I can't say I can't speak for everybody, but I can surely tell you that I didn't have a clue on how to necessarily start a prayer life. But I did start with reading God's word. My prayer was always a very simple one. Um, and it was built on the pattern of our father, which art in heaven. And so I just knew that praying was something that I had to do. So I started out, you know, pastor said, you know, just start praying like five minutes a day. Um, just be honest with God and, you know, just exalt him. And that's what I started doing. I started praying five minutes a day, literally. 
five minutes a day because I didn't know how to pray. I didn't know, and since I didn't know how to pray, I didn't know how much time to take. So it was. Really, it started off very simple. Um, but as we were talking last week, uh, we we discussed um, that prayer was relative to communication. So we wanted to learn how to communicate with God since we now have access after salvation. So since prayer is relative to communication and communication is relative to relationship, yes, uh, then one would need to spend time with the person to strengthen that tie. Yes. So it's like any other relationship, right? We, in order to learn a person, learn a thing, learn a skill, uh, learn how to do a job, Anything that we learn, we have to spend time with it, right? We got to spend time tinkering with it. We have to spend time um, reading about it. And, and and we start off with the basics and, and then we just get a little bit more in depth with it. And prayer is no different than any other thing. You have to spend time with it. So if you want to know who God is that you first start off with, you may not know him in the sense of... Um, understanding or 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 you know really understanding what that communication entails so you may start off with something like father or god you know i need to to know you i need to understand more about your word and so forth and so on you know just little baby steps that you're taking um i i just want to tell you about my experience and maybe that'll make it a little bit easier to talk about so when i first got saved i had no idea about prayer my mother told me, just start off reading the book of John. So I started reading the book of John, and I literally had a dream about the book of John. The pages were just going up into the heaven. Um, and so I just started, you know, continuing to read it until I got to say John, the 14th chapter. And John, the 14th chapter, talks about the comforter, the Holy Spirit, and how that the Holy Spirit will teach us all things and bring all things into our remembrance. So what I learned from that is that I had to know the word, right? Because yes. the Holy Spirit brings all things back to you. So I started reading God's word more often. And then I started praying, asking God to fill me with the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit was an illuminator. So over time, I just started praying for the Holy Spirit Literally, I believe that when you first get saved, you are fire for God. You want to run for God. You're full of Amen. zeal, but you don't have no knowledge. So my entire prayer life was built around knowing who God was, learning God, learning God's word. So all I ever prayed for was that God would reveal himself to me. I just started praying, fill me with the Holy Spirit. God, help me to learn your word. I don't understand this, you know, and, and that was my prayer. My prayer life was just built around those particular uh, parts of the word of God. And so for me, I got I got baptized with the Holy Spirit on my birthday. I went to church on my birthday. It was a Friday and uh, God did fill me with the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit began to unction me to prayer, prayer in the morning, prayer in the afternoon, prayer in the evening, every night before I went to bed, I just started praying. And God will show you, um, according to his word, what to pray for. So you may start off praying and asking God to reveal himself to you, reveal the gifts that he's given to you, reveal to you what he would have you to do, because not only do you learn these things um, you know, how to pray while you're actually learning how to pray. You're in church at the same time. And when you're in church, you're being taught the word of God. You're being yes. taught the things that you need to do to develop that relationship. So in prayer, you're praying. In church, you're singing hymns. In church, you're worshiping. In church, the, the teacher is teaching you the word of God and you're learning from that that you're hearing the pastor preach the word of God as well. So all of these elements in combination helps you to develop a prayer life. It helps you to develop a relationship with God because 
you really can't separate the two things. Um, in order to know how to pray to God, you have to know the God that you're praying to. <laughs> that I hope that makes sense. But yes, if you makes are going to start a job, you can't do the job unless you learn the job. Right? And most people that go into a job, you learn the company that you're working for. Right. You read about the company, you learn about the mission statement and all those things that are part of that. And then they then they want to know what kind of skills you have. And they'll say, well, this is what the job requires you to do. You have to do X, Y, and Z. You got to see your patients, your clients. Uh, you got to uh, you got to have uh, documentation. You got to show us that you've been doing this, that and the other. And people are following you to make sure that you're doing what you are hired to do. And yes. it's the same thing when you're developing a relationship with God. The Holy Spirit is our monitor. It's like our Sister Astrid's daughter said about the TSA. You know, the Holy Spirit, we have to go through that. The Holy Spirit scans us and, and is seeing what we're, what we're working on, what, what, what we need to develop in our lives so that we can be strengthened in that thing. You didn't just start off Excel. You didn't start off learning Microsoft Word and you just you were just in depth and um, affluent in it. You had to learn how to utilize the software to be able to tap in it. It's the same thing when you're developing a relationship with God. So let me take you to the word and 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 and, and give you scriptures that literally help me to grow and develop my prayer life. I know I'm moving, you know, a little fast, but you know, we, we only have a, a little bit of time to kind of get the point across. But anything that you develop, you got to start off with you start off small and you work your way through it. So, yes. um, Luke 9 and 23, it says, And he said unto them, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. And so it's a daily thing that we have to engage in. When you start to do something daily, after it always says is if you if you don't if you don't pray for a week, you become weak. But if you're yes. praying daily, you're building your prayer life. You're gonna go from our Father, which art in heaven, and you're gonna say, Father, I thank you. I glorify your name today. I thank you for how that you have kept me, how you woke me up this morning, how you watched over me as I slept and slumbered. And Father, I just, I come before you to worship you, to adore you, to tell you that I love you, to thank you for the strength that you've given in my body. Thank you, Father. My prayer is thank you, Father, for the heart that's still beating in my chest, the blood that's running warm in my veins, for the air that's in my lungs. I thank you, Father, because you have kept me, Father, and you have watched over me even when I was traveling. And, and you just thank God for all the things that he's doing. And you, you thank God for your family. You're thanking God for your brothers and sisters in Christ. You're giving him the glory because you know that you can't keep yourself these are all things that you're doing. You you grow into that, and you be and then you begin to say, Father, I I come before you even according to your word. And Father, I pray today that you would X, Y, and Z, Father, that you would give us this day our daily bread. That Father, that you would lead and guide me today. Order my steps according to your word, Father. What will you have me to do today? You're praying for God's people. You're moving from. Uh, uh, from glory to glory in your prayer. You start off with worship. You start off with thanksgiving and you start growing into intercessory prayer. You start praying for other people. Father, there are some sick that are amongst us, Father. You'll call out the names to God for those people. You become more specific and detailed in your prayer. Father, this one has that. That one has this. And you begin to tell God, Father, you are the creator of all flesh. You yes. are the one that have made me and we're fearfully and wonderfully made. Father, we want to operate at optimum uh, capacity, Father. We need you to touch our bodies. Father, your word declares that healing is the children's bread. And you begin to pray because you know God's word. And so when, when, you, when you are taking up the cross, that's your mission statement, right? 
The cross is a mission statement. You're saying to God, I take up the mission of the cross. I'm not only am I praying, Father, and, and, and I'm coming to you, but I'm praying for other people. I'm praying for salvation for others. The mission of the cross, after you've learned it, you take it and you, you utilize it to benefit other people. You start to pray for the salvation of souls, praying for the healing, praying for deliverance and whatever a prayer might entail. But we don't start out that way. We start out with building through the word of God. So we only know that we have to take up our cross daily because it's in God's word. He said, if any man will follow him or come after him or pattern his life, because after, after him is patterning ourselves after the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you read the, the, the gospels, you're going to find that Jesus always stole time away to pray. Yes. He always stole time away to pray. If you read, uh, John, the 16th and 17th chapter, you're going to find that there, there is so much prayer between those two chapters. Um, that is just, it's just something that you know that, that we have to be likewise armed because our Lord and Savior took the time out to pray. And if Jesus took the time out to pray, even when he was breaking bread, he prayed, he broke bread. Yes. And he prayed and he broke bread and he gave it to the disciples. When he was praying for the sick, whatever it was he was doing, the scripture declares that he would always look to his father in heaven and pray. And so yes. that's a pattern for us. If any man will come after me, that he's the pattern himself likewise. This is why it's important. I tell you, I, now I'm in this space where every day I get up, it doesn't matter what's going on. If I've overslept or whatever it might be, I got to get on my knees and pray every single morning. Because if you allow something to distract you from your prayer and you miss it today, tomorrow it might be the same thing. Or you will allow things to break into your pattern of prayer and you're not going to pray. I understand sometimes that you, you know, if you know, you got to jump up and go on the run. You got to pray while you on the move as well. Yes, say that. Which got to keep that prayer, like Brother Orville's song says, you got to keep that prayer wheel turning. Yes. And so every day, every morning, no matter what, I get up in the morning, the first thing I do when my feet hit the floor, I make up my bed. That's my pattern. I make up my bread, bed, I'm going in the bathroom, I'm going to brush my teeth, throw some water in my eyes, wipe off my face, and I'm going to anoint myself. I'm going to get on my knees and I'm going to pray because before I do anything, I need to pray because the enemy is already busy. Mm -hmm. You need to get up and pray and counteract whatever, <laughs> whatever you need to counteract before you start your day. So developing your prayer life, you start off with the word. Then yes. you know, your word will teach you you know, there are things in the word of God that God says, if you ask, it shall be given. If you seek, you'll find it. If you knock, it shall be open unto you. And so to, the way to ask is asking the prayer. The way to seek is seek it in prayer, right? Knocking, uh, you knock in prayer. You knock like that woman the un with the unjust uh, woman, judge. Unjust, Right yes. on, knocking and knocking and knocking and knocking until the prayer is answered. And so yes. if any man will come after me, let him deny himself. That's why I said in the morning, in the morning, I used to get up, oh, you know, it was food. It was this, it was that, whatever it may be. But we deny ourselves. We deny those fleshly urges and we take up our cross and we follow Christ. So in developing your, your daily life with prayer, you begin to decrease and God begins to increase. And he begins to squeeze out, so to speak, the world, because it's important that we become more and more in line with the things of God than the things of the world. I didn't say give up and forget and throw away the things of the world because we know we got to live in it. Right. And there are things that yes. we have to do. But you be you begin to grow in the spirit. That's that's what I, the, the phrase I want to use. You begin to grow in the spirit and then it becomes a second nature. Then the Holy Spirit begins to tug at you, 
Maybe it's a person. Maybe it's a thing. But the Holy Spirit begins to tell you, pray for this one. Pray for that. Pray for a particular situation. God will lay somebody on your heart because now it's become a part of you, just like yes. the job that you do. Now you can open up Microsoft Excel and Word and work through it like it ain't nothing. I'm so Astra can go in the operating room and work through it like it's nothing because it becomes second nature. Second nature, yes. The thing that you are hired to do becomes second nature. The things that God have called us to do, we're hired to, to work in the kingdom of God. And that prayer life becomes second nature to us. And even when we're not on our knees, the Holy Spirit is still talking. It's giving us God's word. And that's why temptation doesn't grab a hold of us. Because yes. God's word says that you know, if we pray, the Bible says that there have no temptation that have taken us, but such as common unto man. It's common to every man. Every man. Yes. But God says that he will not allow us to be tempted above that which we are able. But with the temptation, make a way of escape for us. That's word. And so yes. I, that's my way of escape through God's word. So developing a prayer life is essential to every believer. It's, 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 it's essential to yes. your spiritual life. And so taking up your cross daily and following the Lord, following his pattern, following what he did. If you follow Jesus, you're going to learn that the first thing that Jesus did was he took, he chose his disciples and he sat down and he taught them. He started to teach them first. And then they yes. said, well, look, teach us how to pray. Yes. Right? So he developed them. He started to teach them first. He taught them in parables. Then he would tell them plainly. Right. And then he said, he said, I need you to, to, to stay here and be endued with power on high. Right? And that the Holy Ghost will fall upon them. And so the pattern for us to follow is wrapped up in the word. So if we're going to develop a prayer life, we need to first start reading the word of God. It will come back to you. And when you go to pray, you're going to remember the scriptures that you read. And you can pray the word that you read and you can give it back to God. Amen. The second thing is connection. Right? You have to keep a connection, as I just talked about. But let's go to the word of God and let's see what God's word says about connection in the book of John, the 15th chapter, verses four through six. The scriptures declares, abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. And if you read further on than that, it also says, for without me, you can do nothing. You can do nothing, so, yes. Jesus said, if you abide in me, abiding in Christ is abiding in his word. If you put his word in you, you put Christ in you or in a, 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 a greater way. You, you're abiding in the vine. A grape can't grow off the, off the vine. An orange Amen. can't grow off an orange tree. Right. An apple can grow off of that. It's got to be attached to the vine in order for something to grow. And so when you are attached to the vine, the branches are. And that's what we are. We are the branches. He's divine. We're attached to him. And he said, you can bear fruit because you can't bear nothing by yourself. You can't make up your own word. You can't make up any kind of old prayer you want to pray. No, you got to pray according to the word of God. You got to yes. stay connected to the vine. And Come the on. way to stay connected to the vine is to stay in the word of God. The worst thing you can do is follow people who may not be following Christ. And you're just patterning yourself after people, what people do. I have to pattern myself according to the word of God. If the word, if it's in God's word, then I want it in this container, right? It, the scripture says that you can't put new wine in old bottles. In old bottles, yeah. Right? You got to put new wine in new bottles. So when you become new, you can't pattern your life after old things, after old habits, right? You got to pattern yourself after the word of God. The word of God is that new thing that you put in the new container 
right? And it helps to push out the old habits. It's not like they're gone. Because Paul said, when I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. I took those things away. It's not yes. that people don't, they, they, when they used to be gangbangers, maybe liars, whoremongers, thieves, adulterers, backbiters. As the scripture says, such were some of you, such were some of us. We, those were the lifestyles that we pattern ourselves after. But once we became new vessels, right, and we put off the old manner of man and put on Christ Jesus, we had to take the examples from the scripture and pattern our lives after that. And that's why the Bible says, we're, the word of God is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Our paths are illuminated by the word of God. So when we are, we, when we are patterning our lives after Christ, we stay connected to the true, the true vine and we begin to grow. So our prayer life is patterned after the word of God. If you can't, every successful preacher, minister, prophet, evangelist, lay member, choir singer, Whoever you are, if you want the anointing of God to flow through your life, it has to be patterned through a, a successful prayer life. It is numero uno to every believer. And you grow. <laughs> Amen. You don't get there overnight. It, it's just like we grow as babies and we start to crawl. Then we start to walk. And our walk is a little wobbly. Then we get steady. Then we get confident and then we don't longer need anybody to assist us to walk. I can't take the ministers home with me, the evangelists home with me, the missionaries home with me to pray with me. I got to learn how to pray in my own house. By yourself, yes. I've got to see God for myself. I can't go to my bishop and say to my bishop, Bishop, what is God's will for my life? No, I got to pray and ask God, "What, Lord, what is the will, your will for my life? What will you have me to do? What is my uh, what is my uh, mission? What will you have me to do? Father, what is the thing in my life that you want to work through? And, and we learn to pray for that. Father, what are, what are the gifts of the spirit? These things come through a personal prayer life. Personal. Yes. I cannot stress that enough. It comes through a personal prayer life. And if you're honest and sincere, I think Brother Orville or Sister Astrid was talking about this last week. Being honest and sincere in your prayer life is the best way to develop your prayer life. You be honest with God, Lord, I, I, this right here, I need you to deliver me from, I need you to help yes. me. And God will begin to do it because you're connected to him. It's see, this, this is, this is the thing that you know, that's in God's word. You, you find the word, the scripture, the thing that you need God to fix in you. And you find that what, what does God's word say for? said um, about it. Yes. David says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. See if there be any wicked way in me and lead me the way everlasting. Right? And and so whatever it is that you need God to bring out of you so that you could be full of him, you just you start to pray about it. There is a scripture for any part of your life that you Every need part. to develop. Right? Your mind. The Bible says that if you keep your mind stayed on him, I yes. will keep you in perfect peace, right? Yes. You know, the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, does the, uh, of the mouth, the mouth speak. Yeah. So you would ask God, Father, help me to guard my heart. Because yes. that's your will for my life, that my heart be guarded. And you start praying about your heart. So whatever it is that you need God to do, it's all in the word of God. So we, we learn the word of God. The last thing I will say about developing, all of it's lined up together. Um, is sanctification, right? All this is in the book of John, 17th chapter. Um, the book of John 17, uh, I think it starts in verse 17. Um, it says, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is thy truth. word is truth, yes. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself that also, that they may also, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone, but for those also which shall believe on me 
through their word. And this is why sanctification is so important. Sanctification in its simpler form, simplest form is to separate yourself. Separating yourself simply means to be set apart for God's use. I still have to go to work every day. Uh, the wheat and the tares are going to grow together. I cannot Amen. not live in the world. The Bible says we're in the world, we're not of the world. We're still going to be in the world where all the wickedness and the evil and all the ungodly things are going on. The clubs are going to still be here. Drugs are still going to be here. Alcohol is going to still be here. Men are still going to make the cat calls. Women are still going to wear the short dresses and the cleavage dresses and whatever it is. Uh, there's still going to be corruption. There's still going to be corrupt politicians. There's going to always be corruption in the world. Something that's going to try to corrupt your spirit. But Jesus said he himself sanctified at himself as I separated myself, not from the world per se, but from the world's behavior. I separate myself from that. My behavior has to be patterned after God's word. If God's word says don't lie, steal, don't cheat, don't fornicate, don't commit adultery, uh, you know, just you don't judge people, don't whatever God's word says, that's the pattern that I have to follow. Why? Because as I develop my own life for the sake of Christ, it is my responsibility to help other people develop themselves. And if I can't, if people can't look at me and see an example, then I can't tell anybody else to pattern themselves after Christ because my Amen. life is supposed to be patterned after Christ. I'm supposed to be walking in the steps of my Lord and Savior. So in doing so, when I'm praying for people, I first pray for me. I first ask God to help me as the priest could not go before the mercy seat in the most holy of holies, if he went in there on behalf of the people and he wasn't right, he dropped dead. They just had yes. to drag him out. Yes, so he I did. Gotta first be, thank God for mercy and for grace. Um, but I, I have to make sure that I develop a prayer life so that I can draw close to God so that God can reveal what my assignment is and that assignment can benefit other people. So developing a prayer life is, is simply a daily walk with Christ. You have to make time for him. You got to make time for him in the morning, time for him in the afternoon, time for him in the evening, whatever that time looks like for you. I mean, I know what it looks like for me, but you have, and you got to get to know him. And the way to know God is to know God's word. The Bible yes. says that God is holy. What is holiness? What is sanctification? What is giving up all to follow Christ? What does that look like? The only way to know it is to know God's word. And if I'm going to pray, that's what I'm going to pray. Because I want God to use me for his glory. But I first want to be a vessel, you know, that's right with God. I first want to be right with God so that I can, when people look at me, they don't call me a hypocrite. They don't say I'm a liar, you know. I want to be that person. Now, am I perfect? No. Do I mess up? Absolutely. Do I make mistakes? Yep. Because as Astrid said from the beginning, we're in the flesh and things happen. You yes. know, but we recognize when those things happen and it's up to us to repent and, and get it right. And, and, and you can't, sin can't be covered. We got to yes, expose Lord. it for what it is and say, yeah, I messed up, but you know what? Right back on track. I don't want to get derailed. I mean, when a train is derailed, they got to call all this, these people, they got to lift, they got to do heavy lifting and put it back on track to get everybody back on the move again. And it's no different in the spirit. When the fire of God is going out because of sin, it's a dangerous thing. So, I mean, I know that's a, a lot to chew on, but in its simplicity, Luke, the ninth chapter, John, you can read John start from the beginning. But if you read John 14, 15, 16 and 17, it will open up your understanding on how important it is to daily walk with Christ, to be sanctified for him and uh, to understand that he was our first example and to pattern ourselves after him and his life 
and his lifestyle. And if we can do that, we can develop every part of our life. Every part of us that's developed in Christ is developed through prayer. Because Amen. the more you talk to God about this thing, the more, the more connected you feel to him. And the more you begin to say, expose yourself to God on the altar, and the more you become aware, self-awareness is there. You're aware that your flesh wants to do things. And that's why it's important to pray out loud to God, you know, according to his word. Um, and I hope that was a blessing to somebody. I hope somebody understands that prayer is developed over time and through relationship. You got to get to know him. You got to know your husband before you marry him. You got to know your job before you became adept in it. You got to know how to travel through uh, back and forth to work, how to drive your car. Everything that you've learned in life, you had to spend time doing it. And God is no different. You have to learn him. You got to learn how to talk to him, learn how to connect with him in order to be. Thank you, Lord. God bless you. They say that must be true because you sneezed on it. But, <laughs> you know, that's just the old tale we used to say. But when you, <laughs> when you strengthen, when you're strengthened, um, it's, it's the strength that comes through prayer. That helps you to, to grow stronger, to wax stronger um, in God. And so um, prayer is essential. If you're going to make it, and I could go a little bit further, but we're just talking about developing prayer. The benefits of prayer comes down the line somewhere. But I hope someone was uh, blessed by that. Prayer starts off with just a, a few simple words, a few minutes a day. Before you know it, that five minutes turns into a half an hour, it turns into an hour, it turns into shut-ins, and so forth and so on. And so um, that's my um, few scriptures on developing a prayer life. Amen. Praise God. Um, some of the things that you said I was in my notes, I was like, oh, she's all up in my notes. <laughs> but that's just to show you how the Spirit um, confirms things. I'm not going to try to take uh, with the time is um, as far spent, but we are speaking on how to develop um, a life of prayer. We have to remember also that when we first get saved, we are in love with the presence of God or with the feeling that we have about being in his presence. Amen. But then you, we have to develop falling in love with God. Amen. Amen. And that is true prayer life. We develop um, our relationship, like um, Chrislyn said, um, Evangelist Chrislyn said at the beginning, you develop a relationship with God. You develop uh, uh, um, through your prayer life. Um, what you're basically doing is like the like she spoke about that you need the GPS for, for um, traveling. And the GPS is our spiritual GPS is God positional service. Amen. So for God Amen. to be able to download into us, we have to connect to the outlet so that the current can be able to flow. And like she said, also, um, that's where power, your power lies. If you get a, a sip for an instant an iron and you try to um, iron your clothes without uh, um, connecting it to the source of where the electricity or the current would come, it won't work. So you have to plug Amen. in. So prayer is basically just basically plugging in to the source so we can get that download from God. And, and prayer is a dialogue. So you talk to God and then you also take a minute to or, uh, or however long it takes for God to speak back to you. Um, I wrote down eight keys to a more powerful Amen. prayer life. The number one. Know to whom you were speaking, which um, she said it. You got to know that you are speaking to the almighty God. And one of my favorite scriptures um, or a, a phrase in one of my favorite scriptures is, is there anything too hard for him? Know that Amen. he has the power to deliver you from whatever ailment, sickness, um, in, uh, infirmity, um, disease um, that a plague in your body or, or someone that or a relative or someone that you really love, you have to first know that he's able, that he is capable. 
and that he has all power. You know, we, yeah. we always say, you know, God is all powerful. He's almighty. You know, we have learned everything about, you know, in the, as you go to Bible study, but do we really believe it? And do we really mm. implement it into our life? And that's the time Amen. that um, we have to pray. And she already mentioned in Matthew chapter six, which is the Lord's prayer. And um, no, um, first um, approach in prayer, we come to God humbly. And um, we also give him adoration and worship. That's our first um, um, line of, of prayer. And then as the prayer goes on, it also says to ask God for forgiveness. Because sometimes we might do things that, you know, Amen. knowingly or unbeknowingly that that can hinder our, our prayers. Or we had a, a, a dispute with somebody and it got heated. And even the Bible says, you know, if you go to church and you know, you know that somebody mm -hmm. has an ought against you or somebody is upset with you for whatever their reasons they are or whatever your reasons are. He said, before you give the offering, he said, put, um, go and make it right with that person. He Amen. said, so that your prayers won't be hindered. Also, yes. he, he also um, admonishes the husbands, you know, with their wives so that their prayers won't be hindered. So for us not to pray amiss, we have to pray like Sister Evangelist Robinson said, um, the word of God. We can't pray outside of the word of God. We can't pray what we want. Oh, God, kill that person. Oh, God, you know, I move <laughs> her out of my way. <laughs> you, you understand? All of those things. He even urges us, and this is one of the hard pills to swallow, to pray for our enemies, especially when you know yeah. they are your enemies indeed mm -hmm. and that they yes. are doing everything in their power to cause your demise. That is a hard pill to swallow, especially when you've been good to the person. And like they say, keep your friends close, but keep your enemies closer. Um, sometimes it's because the ones that you consider your friends, sometimes they're not your friends, they're your frenemies. And that's why we have to pray. Um, like she said, Jesus took time out of the day, even though he was the deity of God represented here on earth. He still sought the will of the father mm -hmm. and he prayed and he, and he like, you know, did basically like disappeared, slipped away, went and find mm -hmm. a hiding place where he could communicate with the father. So he showed us a perfect example of how we, sh why we should pray. When you first, um, uh, falling in love with Jesus, you might not know how to pray at the time, but as you spend more time with him, the Holy Spirit will teach you how to pray because yes, the Holy yes. Spirit is there to teach us all things. Just like how the Holy Spirit can teach you how to do uh, your job, how to do uh, uh, be a mother, how to um, cook. Yes, you know, For those that true. didn't know how to cook at the beginning, the Holy Spirit would start speaking to you and telling you, add this, put a pinch of this, put a pinch of that, a dash of that. So the mm -hmm. same way the Holy Spirit would teach us how to pray. Amen. Um, but we must find time to pray. Um, prayer develop. Um, the second one is 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 Thanksgiving, which we already mentioned, is giving God thanks. Um, you know, for all that we have and um all that He has done in our life, you know, and um the the song says, um, you know, I if I if if I had a, a pen that I can write. I can't tell um, you of how um, God, how much things God has done for me. It won't be enough. It will take an ocean for me to write everything that God has done for me. Number three is ask God's will. Um, that's what the scripture says also, thy kingdom come and thy will be done. We are citizens of the kingdom of God. And as citizen. Like say, um, for instance, an example, you are a, 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 an American citizen. You had to give up your, your, your country rights and everything. And now you have to abide by the laws mm -hmm. in America. So the same way we are citizens of the kingdom of God. Right. And now Amen. we have to abide 
by the laws of the kingdom and the principles of the kingdom. That's a, what is the will of the Father? What is your will, God? What do you want me to do? Who do you want me to pray? Who do you want me to marry? And let me say that because a lot of people don't think that that's necessary. But I don't know for you, um, but I know for myself that sometimes you will avoid a lot of heartaches along the way. You will allow, uh, avoid a lot of prayers. You will uh, avoid a lot of um, mishaps if you will just seek the will of God. And there is a scripture in Genesis, in the book of Amen. Genesis, where Abraham sent his servant to seek him a wife for um, his son Isaac. And, and then it came, um, as the scripture goes on, it's, it tells us that the servant got to a well and he had his camels and he knelt down and he said, father of of my, he said, God of my uh, father, Abraham, whom mm -hmm. I serve, he mm -hmm. said, and his son, Isaac, he said, I pray that the woman that comes, shows up at this well, give me water and give water to these camels, be the wife that you have selected for my Lord, Isaac. And guess who showed up? And we know the story that she showed up and not only that she showed up, but God granted that servant oh, yeah. a prayer. So in everything, in everything, the Bible, the, the Bible says, you know, um, in all our ways to acknowledge him and he will direct our path. So if Amen. you need direction, even seeking jobs, God, which job do you want me to have? open the right doors and God close the doors because your word said that the doors that you close, no man can open. And when you open a door that no man can shut it and God, you see what I need. You know, sometimes we have to be very specific with God and tell him exactly what I want this salary. I want this type of job. I want this position and God will give you the desires of your heart. If we delight ourselves in the Lord, it is written that he will give us the desires of our heart. Amen. So the Amen. other one is say what you need. Say it, be bold about it. You mm -hmm. are a citizen Amen. of the kingdom of God. Amen. And because of his finished work on the cross of Calvary, you have the right, full access to come boldly to the throne of grace and ask and petition your need. Ask also for forgiveness. You know you that somebody hurt you or you hurt somebody. Ask for forgiveness for the father, for the person, and also for yourself. Be the repairer of the bridge. Amen. And the number six is Amen. pray with a friend. It's always good. Sometimes I call my my cousin um um like um Julia calls her Titi Wanda. Um, I call her up and we have like a grand old time praying. Sometimes I call my mom and I say, mom, let's pray. And we start praying on the, on the phone. And it always turns out to be a blessing because the Bible says, we're two or three agree together in your name. There you are in the midst. And sometimes I call my girls from, um, worth the true panel or I text them and I said, you know what, let's pray. Let's keep yes. we'll hold one one another up in prayer, mm -hmm. and I I express to them what I'm going through, and sometimes we get to talk about each other, what each other is going through at the time, and we ask each other for prayer because we know that there is power in agreement. It's like a chain link, right? And um, God said He is in the midst whenever we do that. Amen. Number seven is pray the word of God. And, and Evangelist Robinson spoke that, you know, when you said you have a right to say, God, you said it in your word that whatsoever thing I desire when I pray, believe that if I believe that, that I shall have it, it is written in your word. God, you say for me not to cast my, therefore my confidence for, um, 
I'm trying to remember the scripture. Cast not therefore away your confidence, which has yes. great recompense yes. of reward. Yes. Amen. And that's Hebrews 10 and 35. So we have a right to tell God, remind him of his word. It is written in your word, God. I know I'm not feeling well in my body, but your word said that if my people, which are called by my name, yes. shall yes. humble themselves and turn and pray and pray and, and turn. Okay from their wicked ways. That means that sometimes even in the midst of prayer, we have to examine ourselves to see yes. if we are in right standing before mm -hmm. God. Amen. God, Amen. if you find anything in me that is not pleasing to you, take it away. I don't want it. I don't need it. But sometimes we want to hold on to things. Sometimes to relationships that God is, is saying that relationship is not healthy for you. It's not, it's not, um, it's not good for you. It's not taking you anywhere. It's not elevating you to the place that I need you to be. And sometimes God allowed things to fall apart. Then sometimes he allowed the, the, the very foundation we are standing on to crumble just to bring us to a place where he wants us because he is the potter and we are the clay. And we know that when the, mm -hmm. the, the potter, the, he's like on the, on the, on the tool and he's, he put the clay together and he said, at first it doesn't look like anything, but as he go and he starts, and you see, he starts taking some of the clay aside as he's putting it on the powder smith wheel. And when he's, when he finished and that, that shape comes out and then he adds color to it and it's a beautiful piece. There's a song that I was um, praying the other day and I was telling God about this song. It says, um, you know, basically my heart is broken in a million pieces, but you can take, make something beautiful out of all mm. those pieces. Uh, take all my brokenness, take yeah. all my, my, take away my fear, take away my anxiety, take away my, um, um, depression, God, take away my low self-esteem, take away my insecurities, God, take away everything that does not align itself with your word. Um, we did a podcast that's called Identity. Um, so it's it's about you identifying who you are, and it's, mm. a, it's about you regaining your identity in Christ. And just like the onion we had said in that podcast that has many layers. Sometimes you got to, God want to peel every single layer until we mirror him, until we Amen. become more like him. And that should be our desire. Amen. And our last one is memorize scripture. Jesus not only break from life demands when he felt he was too busy and needed to recharge and spend time with the heavenly father. His life was intended to give us an example that we could follow and learn. So even though he was the incarnation on earth, he didn't use his divine powers as the son of God when it came to facing life's challenges, amen? But he humbled himself. Instead, when burdened and exhausted or in need of a spiritual refreshment, he would slip away to pray. He plugged into the power, um, perception, and purpose that can only be found as being a servant of God. Because God is the greatest power, we must attach ourselves to his divine presence. It's only seeking him that we can get answers to our prayers, to our petitions, to our requests. It's a beautiful, um, the, the Lord's prayer is such a beautiful prayer. Um, one that every believer should hide in their hearts. And we shall pray with an attitude of gratitude for what he's done for us and his sacrificial death on the cross. Develop a morning prayer. And like Chris Lynn said, um, you know, we spoke last week and my, my brother, Minister Orville, spoke about um, praying. You can, it, you, it's, there's no one way to pray. You can pray on your knees if that's how you feel comfortable but you can also pray laying down. You can pray standing up. You can pray sitting down. Um, you know, I used to pray, like I said, when I driving to work, I, uh, you know, that was one of my best times. I, I just, it was just me and God. And sometimes you just need that. Like the, like the movie, um, the prayer, um, warrior, the, the, 
the one with the lady who used to like, she had this room and she will go war room and she oh, will war go movie. into war because mm -hmm. sometimes you're going to have to go into mm -hmm. intercession um, in, um, in war against, you know, principalities, powers, rulers of darkness of this world and whatnot. But we just want you to know that as a, sometimes as a, as a young believer, you're just in love with the presence of God. But now we have to move from the press, um, being in love with the presence of God to falling in love with Jesus and his, and his life. Amen. And to Amen. doing things his way. Amen. We have to deny ourselves, like Sister Chrislyn said, and um, resist the devil. Amen. And how we do it is through prayer and intercession. There was one time somebody did something um, bad to me, and this was a really good friend of mine in the church. And I was so angry. And I went to church and I, I didn't realize how much anger I had on the inside. And one day I was praying and I said, God, what is it that from me that you don't like? Please show me me. Show mm. me what is it that I need to change. And that's when you fall in love with Jesus. And he um, he used it. He did it a very unique way. He brought the girl that I was angry about because of the things that she did against me. He brought her to me. And she stood right in front of me. And I felt that anger rising. Mm. I felt that thing coming up. Like mm -hmm. from deep within. And immediately mm. the Holy Spirit said, that right there. And I just burst wow. out crying. And God said, give it to me. And, wow. you know, sometimes we don't, we don't know that these things are hindering us, you mm. know, from the, but God wants, um, the potter wants to make um, us um, whole together again. Amen. And uh, we are to ask him every day to help us because we are, um, we are human and we are prone to um, error, you know, um, do or say things that, you know, we sometimes you'd be too. like, oh, my God. And uh, I don't know about you, but I have had people say, well, I thought you was a Christian, mm. you know, um, because of that, my action or or, or things. And I, I know that the enemy is also an accuser of the brethren. I'm not talking about those things when the enemy just want you to look bad because, he wants people to hate you because he hates you. I'm talking about when you had missed the mark and you did things that you know you wasn't supposed to do in a in a spare of a moment, in the heat of the moment. But God um, uses that for to let us know that's not where you're supposed to be. Amen. Amen. And um, I was in a club one time. I, I, I remember I was um, in my early twenties and I had, I got filled with the Holy ghost and I just thought, this is it. If I get filled with the Holy ghost, I'm sealed. I'm not going to sin again. Nothing. I'm not going to do anything wrong. That's what I was expecting. Um, but, um, lo and behold, I found myself in a club and I was clubbing and I was dancing the night away. And, um, cause I love to dance and, um, you know, and somebody said to me, you don't belong here. What are you doing here? <laughs> and I, I, I was able to recognize the voice of God. Thank God. And I, I, I started, I, you yes. know, I, I did went out, went home and then I had to deal, deal with me and I had to tell God and I told God, you know, and the Holy Spirit spoke to me. He said, I want you to give it to me. And I, I, I remember saying, God, I don't know how. I don't know. I don't know how. He said, just give it to me. And I say, God, just take it away. Take the desire away. Take the appetite away. So that's how we develop a oh, prayer life by, by telling God, take the appetite away. Whether it is for masturbation, fornication, adultery, take the appetite away. Because all these things are appetites of the flesh and it keeps you going and going and going after it like an alcoholic or a drug addict. You keep going after that thing because your ap your appetite, you 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 like you say you want to eat, you want to eat it, you want to you want to like continue to fill yourself up with it. So when you right. when you tell God, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to smoke anymore. I don't want to do drugs anymore. I don't want to be um, 
from bed to bed anymore. I don't want to like keep lying anymore. You know, get to the root of it because lying comes from the root. It has a root and it has a, it starts with insecurity and low self-esteem. Sometimes people lie because they want to appear to be something that they're not. And they're not, it, it means that you are not comfortable or you are not loving who you are. So mm -hmm. they end up lying. They lie because of jealousy, because they're jealous about somebody and they want that person to look bad and they don't want people to love or like that person. So they lie also. So all of it has a root. And we have to be honest when we are praying. Amen. Amen. And, and tell God exactly, you know, God, take it away from me. Take the jealousy away. Take the envy away. Take the, the me wanting to always be up front. Take it away, God. Humble me, you know, because a humble and a contrite spirit, God will not despise. Amen. Amen. And say, God, humble me. Humble me. You can also pray, God, show me the heart of people that are around me. So that way you can be aware of how you can handle people. I have done it and he had showed me. I have asked him, show me my leaders. And let me tell you, when he show you your leaders, be prepared. He's going to show you who really has the heart, his heart for you. And God, God would, would, would um, reveal to you their motives and their intentions. That's what he does because he knows everybody's motives and he knows everybody's intention. He's going to show you because we, we, there are a lot of uh, wolves in sheep clothing. There are a lot of people that can preach the paint off the wall. They can, like, like I said, they, and they also can lie Jesus off the cross. So you have to, you have to pray and say, God, open my, open my eyes. Let me see. Let me see, you know, not men like trees. I want to see men like men. You see them. You know them. You know, and if we do that, and if we, um, um, you know, develop that prayer life and that trust in God, you know, our day will go better. Our day will go better. We Life will have will that, a sense of direction. We will mm -hmm. have the peace of God. You know, you ever prayed and, and, and say, God, I dedicate this day to you. I dedicate my life. Be the Lord over this day. Be the Lord over my children. Protect us, direct us, you know, keep us in your presence. And when you develop that um, prayer life with God, you know, he will shield you. The Bible says, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So with that, I'm finished. Um, I hope you guys received something tonight. Please share it. As I always say, that somebody else can be blessed if you were blessed by it. Um, don't forget that we also have the YouTube mm -hmm. channel. Also, it comes on on Wednesdays at 930 for those of you that don't know. 9 30 a.m you can watch it again so you can write notes down um and um so you can um rehearse it and yes study the word of god to sh um to sh so we can show ourselves approved um rehearse the words of the word of god back to him he Amen. said command ye me there's, there's a scripture where he also tell us to command him and to bring it to his remembrance, bring not that God forgets, but it says to bring it to his remembrance so we can say God. And, and that's one of my he favorite said, things to do. Your word says, God, Amen. you said it in your word and mm -hmm. you and your word is tied onto you. And you Amen. said that your word will never fall short, but it, it will accomplish for what it was speaking for. That's one mm -hmm. of my favorite things to do when I'm praying. God, you said, you said it. And I believe it, I agree with it, and that settles it. If you said it, I have a right to remind you, you said, God, that what's a, whatever I ask, ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and ye shall find, knock and the door shall be opened unto you. So with that, you have been empowered. Mr. Chrislin. You are enough. You you are excellent. You are excellent. We have to say two. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and we are 
enough. Amen. So we love you. God loves you. And um, have a fabulous, fantabulous week, everybody. And keep prayer. Keep praying. Amen. Um, there is an acronym that says PUSH. And it's pray until something, Ooh, something happens. happens. So we have to pray. Like like Sister Chrislyn said, and that's one of my favorite stories too, about the un the lady that went to the uh, before the unjust judge. She kept coming and coming until he said, he said, I don't fear God or man. He said, but this woman, because of her persistence, mm -hmm. she said, I please give her what she's asking for. So sometimes we have to be persistent with God, instant in prayer, the Bible says, right? Mm -hmm. So we have to keep coming um, to that telephone to glory that's always Amen. on the line. And it says you can hear from heaven almost every time. Amen. It's oh, a royal wow. service free and it's free for one and for all. So let's call him up. Don't be afraid. It doesn't matter whether you sin or not, whether you did, you lied or not. You know, he will still answer. We can ask for forgiveness and and um, and clear the path so he can be able to answer us back. Amen. 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 So we thank you. I saw Sister Julia was on also. Um, we still praying for you, my sister. We love you. Um, we love Anne-Marie Porter. Um, Kelly, as usual, um, Hilda, um, trying to see who else was on, John McCory, um, bless you, my brother, God bless you, my brother Orva was on for a little bit, um, um, First Lady Cindy Grant was on also, um, God bless you guys, um, my my good friend, um, Glenna Nelson, Chantel Lanette, God bless you guys. Thank you for tuning in with us today. Um, next week, um, Monday, we will be speaking about, um, the benefits of praying. Amen. Amen. So we're just going to like, bring a little bit of clarity on what the benefits of praying. Cause sometimes when you pray and you don't receive an answer um, immediately, or when we think we should have it from God, we think that, um, that God is not there and God doesn't want us, but we're going to try to explain to the best of our ability, the benefits of praying. Amen. Amen. So God bless you. God uh, bless we love everyone. you. Amen. Happy Martin Luther King's Day, everybody.